Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up? Welcome in. NFL Gambling Picks Week Number 12. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And this is Winning Cures Everything. Whew. I went two and three last week. Lost $95.45. Chris went two and two. He won nine dollars. So that's good. Nine dollars and nine cents. On the season. I am 24, 32, and 2. I've lost 13.86 units. Chris is 26 and 26. And he has won 3.95 units. Let's celebrate. I don't know that that's celebrating, but... Hey, you're above... uh, Well, not above 500, but you are above... uh, You're not in the red. Yeah. I'm in the black. It's always good. I'm at Mount 500. Let's let's get over that hump. There you go. uh, I got six games tonight. How many you got? I got six. Okay. We get okay. a little a little bouncy bouncy. Not too that shabby. rarely happens. Yeah. It uh I think we got a lot of these the same. Some, absolutely, I would imagine. Some of these lines spoke to me. Yeah. Spoke to me. All right. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. So go and check that bad boy out. Tunica, Mississippi, always got fantastic stuff going on down there. Great golf courses for when it warms back up, of course. And great steakhouses. Great shows. And they got some cool concerts come through. All the, uh, uh, yeah. Com- comedians all the time. Like, yep. All sorts of stuff. Good stuff going on down in Tunica, Mississippi. TunicaTravel.com is the place to find out about all of it, including all the sports books. So, winningcureseverything.com is the website to find out more information about us. You can find our picks previews, podcasts, videos, our social media platforms, and you can enter, uh, enter into our Pick'em contest over there. Go and, uh, and click on Football Picks Contest. It's very simple. You put in your name, you put in your email, you pick 10 games against the spread, 7 college, 3 NFL. It's all the games on the weekend. It's no Thursday, Friday games. It's none of that. It's Saturday games and Sunday games. And make sure you enter in by 10 a.m. on Saturday, 10 a.m. Central. And you will be good to go. So, let's go ahead and fire into it. I don't want to take too long tonight. Oh, no, we've, we've got TJ Reeves hopping on with us at the end of the show. Yeah. So, make sure you stick around for that. TJ, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. We talk some NFL officiating. Comes on uh, every week. Yeah, comes on every you know week. Him. He is the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, which you can find at any of your favorite podcast distributors. Game number one for me. And I think it might be the same for you. We're going to Thursday night first. Yes, sir. The Colts are catching three and a half at Houston. Now, you don't want to make a bet based on what happened last week. Correct. So I won't do that. I'll just base it on the fact that I think the Colts are a better football team than the Texans. Correct. Now, last week helped that. Let's let's base it on season long. How about we? Because we're both taking this game, right? Yes. Uh, I, I like the Colts plus three and a half here. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, like when he plays, when he's playing, they're a better football team than the Texans. He's yeah. a really good quarterback. Guess yes, he what? is. He knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. Um, so I, I love this pick. I, I think the Colts can win the game outright. I think they will I win the game outright. Can, I, I, we agree on all this stuff. And the fact that we are getting Three and a, a half hook points. here. I can't, can't believe it. I'm just, I'm in shock. I don't know what they're, uh, what they're trying to do here. But, uh, but yeah, I, it's it's fascinating to me that we get a hook for whatever reason. Completely agree. For whatever reason. All right. I like the Colts. I think they can dominate the line of scrimmage, um, offense and defense. And, uh, yeah. I am putting 50 bucks on that one. I'll take 75. 75. I like your style, man. Game number two for me. Not going to be a lot of people watching this one, I don't think. The Steelers lay in six and a half at Cincinnati. There's a ton of public on Cincy. That's weird, too. I would have thought that the Steelers would have been a public team, but they're not. Well, I can I can understand because a lot of people, yourself included, not a big Mason Rudolph guy. True. I think Mason we Rudolph. We never did a breakdown of the NFL. I kind of wish we could do that. We don't really have the time now. Yeah. But I will say this. 
I think that the Steelers could hand the ball off every single play and Ooh. and still win this. Okay. Like it wouldn't matter. Well, one who it team is. is actively trying to lose, so that helps. Yeah. I I I think that the Steelers defense could score twenty one points in this game. And the Bengals may not score. Like I think they are that bad. So give me the Steelers minus six and a half. I'm gonna put seventy five bucks on that one. What uh what is your game number two? I'm gonna go to another bad game. See, this is we're all about the. Uh, there's a, several bad. Like, there's Bill, really good games this week, and then there's Bill Simmons bad. refers to these as the poop vectors. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that for this for this segment here. All right. The Lions are going to Washington. I I don't know if they're playing the Redskins or if there's like some collegiate team that'll show up, or you know maybe the XFL can get started a little early. Uh, the Redskins are bad. They're really bad at football. Dwayne Haskins, not really good at football. Kind of amazing. We didn't realize that earlier. Yeah. I'm laying three and a half. This is an extreme public play. Everybody is on the lines. I'm part of everybody. And uh, I like to be included with all my friends. And we're going to go make money off of Washington. Last week when the Jets played, you could have got into the stadium for $7. You could have got a lower bowl for 19 so, Dang. if you're a Detroit fan and you want to get out of Detroit for like a weekend, and you can get to D.C., you can go watch your team play for under 20 bucks, guaranteed. In the lower bowl? Yeah. I don't know if you can get the lower bowl every week. That was Jets. Jets are pretty bad, too. And Jets are closer. And Jets beat the hell out of them. Yeah. I mean, beat the hell out of them. Yeah, it was bad. Boy, Jamal Adams got him some. I, I, think, I think the Lions, I don't know if – uh, Matt Stafford will play. If Matt Stafford plays, they're going to kill him. But Jeff Driscoll has not looked bad. No. What is, what is going on with football? I, I thought this guy was going to be completely incompetent. I don't have a good answer for you. Um, There's no doubt he's going to outplay Dwayne whoever, Haskins. Dwayne whoever Haskins. they he's, line up. He's outplaying Dwayne Haskins. That's happening. Let's see. Detroit. Give me 100 bucks on that one, by the way. 100 bucks. Uh, uh, lines minus three and a half. All with the public. Stafford is questionable. This week. Yeah, he's still quite. It is Tuesday. We have no clue. I don't know. I don't know that it matters. I uh, I agree with you. I, I mean, am, if he gets named the starter, this number is going to go to like seven and a half. Probably. But, it, but we're going to get it three and a half right now. I don't care about the hook. A hundred bucks is what I'm putting on it as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, Let's see. Let's uh, let's go on and talk about Monday night. Yeah, let's let's get all the games we agree on. Let's uh, Let's do that. All right. So, the Ravens. Giving up three at the Rams. I I don't. the The Rams are not good very at football, good. and the Ravens are killing everybody right now. Yeah, and I think they're making statements too. I mean, they feel like they're they're Clemson trying to justify them yeah. being in the playoffs. And it and it's on Monday Night Football. Yeah, like this could get ugly. Lamar is going to put on a show. I'm going to tell you that. I I could agree when with that. he has been on. And the lights are shining on him. That guy knows it's happening. Yeah. When everybody's watching, he knows, and he is giving the people what they want, baby. I mean, he is. He's one of the most miraculous players I've ever watched. Seeing him do it, and I love the guy. You know, I love the guy. I loved him coming out of college. He, and I've brought this up before. He's broken down a barrier that I'd never in my life. I thought would ever break down. I loathed the Baltimore Ravens for leaving Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, I've said heinous things (laughs) about Art Modell and his dead ass that would ensure that if I didn't own my own business, I would never be employed if the world knew the things that I said about Art Modell. Um, Ray Lewis, I was just, just completely despised. I respected and feared Ed Reed, but never hated him. I am now in full love with Lamar. And yeah. I'm willing to accept the Ravens. <laughs> like willing to let bygones be bygones. Like, look, it's been a long time. Look, I'm a Steelers fan. I hate the Ravens. I get it. But I understand when a team is winning, when they are rolling like this, I'm a bet on them. But it's just but, a special but yours, He's just a special guy. Yeah, yours didn't even to do with betting. No. It's you're just pulling for the kid. I really am. Everyone said he couldn't do it. 
and and I believe that he could. I watched him in college, and I watched him be great. And I and I was on that train, and I I told you there are thirty teams I'm happy with him going. Some of them I wouldn't be as happy as others, but there are thirty teams. There's two teams I didn't want him to go to. Didn't want him to go to Dallas. I didn't want him to go to Baltimore. And, he went to and I'll be damned if that last pick. And, and, and the Patriots had two stops to get him. Now, love Tom. Love you, Tom. You're still here. We're good. We're still here. I got it. Let's keep going. But he's special. He, yes, he, he is. really is special. Now, you uh, you were right about that. Uh, I'm putting 100 bucks on it. I got, I'm got 75. 75. Sounds good we're to this me. We're late in the game. I don't know if the money matters. but Yeah, it really doesn't. Started out with four Gs, and I don't think we've touched it. No, I mean you're you're up on it. Yeah, but, but even losing like but I'm we're betting such small amounts compared to what we what we started with. Yeah. No, you're right. Anyway, let's keep you're going. Right. Next we, game up. All these games will be different. Those are the three that we like together, right? Yes. Good. And then these will all be different. So uh next game up for me. I'm going down to New Orleans. I love the Saints in this spot. It's a big number. I, yes, it is. It is nine and a half. The Saints at home giving up nine and a half against the Panthers. Look, I get it. I understand. Oh no, I've only got uh, I've only got two games left. Okay. Yeah, okay. you've got okay. Anyway, sorry. Saints minus nine and a half at home. It looks fishy, right? The line stinks. Everybody should be loading up on the Panthers. But I think the Saints are really damn good. I think that they got their wake-up call when Atlanta came in. I don't think they're going to have two performances like that back-to-back at home. I think they are going to wrap up this division. I think they are going to own the Panthers this weekend. They slow down McCaffrey. They slow down Kyle Allen. And that Kyle bunch, Allen looks bad. He, he does right now. Really bad. Two weeks straight, he's looked awful. Which is why I'm rolling Saints here. Woo. I no, love the Saints. Minus nine and a half. Give me that bunch for $75. All right. Rolling on up to Nashville. Just a short little three-hour drive away. And I'm betting on the Jacksonville Jaguars. I get plus three. I think Jaguars are equal to the Titans, if not better than the Titans. Um, I'm I'm not a believer of this Tennessee team. And uh, I think Jaguars, I just think I like them a little bit better. I mean, Foles actually looks pretty good. Um, give me fifty bucks plus three Jags. Fifty bucks plus three on the Jags. All right, and then my last bet: the Denver Broncos are going all the way up to Buffalo, New York, and they've looked pretty good. Brandon Allen, he ain't a chump, but I think the Bills are gonna make him look like one. The Broncos had a chance to put away the Vikings. Had a road game last week against a really good defense. And they let them come back. Let them off the hook. This week, ain't going to be none of that. I think the Bills handle business. They slow down this attack. Bills minus four is the play here. I love this game. Give me the Bills. Football team. Oh, yeah. Give me the Bills at $100 at minus four. That's good. I got two more games. All right. First. And they're all kind of primetime games you can watch. Uh, we get to see uh, America's team versus the Cowboys in Patriots Stadium. You like that? Mark I do Brooks. like that. They're minus six. <laughs> I'm rolling with the Pats. Patriots at home just don't lose. Patriots at home, they cover. They're just a cover machine. This is true. Cowboys defense and close to as good as some of the defenses they played lately. Tom Brady in that press conference. After a win and a cover, was still pissed off. Yeah. And I, I think this it's is Pat's minus six. Pat's minus six. Okay. And uh, 75 bucks. And uh, I think this week. I think they're going to Now, put the it one on. thing that scares me is, is you can run on the Patriots. Will they be smart enough to hand the ball to Zeke? I don't know the answer to that. A and B, I think Bill might have something to say about being able to run on them. And, and I like a pissed off Tom Brady. That's true. I mean, I really like a pissed off Tom Brady. That is true. I like that. All right, what's, uh, and what's last, last one, I'm, I'm going to the Sunday night football game. Green Bay at the 49ers. Everybody in the world is just, just all the 49ers can't beat nobody. You know, they're hanging in these games. Just got beat by Seattle. 
They're flawed. They're fractured. Listen, 49ers minus three. 49ers are going to win this game. 49ers are going to cover. I can, the I can the Packers' it. offense is not the same, and this 49ers defense is one of those defenses that will hit you in the mouth. And their offense is good enough to score. What's your, what's your dollar amount? 50, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. All right. I like it. All right. Let's go ahead. We're going to bring in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter, the host of Three Dog Thursday podcast, Mr. TJ Reeves. <coughs> Every single week, TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast joins us to talk a little NFL football. This week, the Saints went in and, and whipped up on the Bucks a little bit. Mm. But uh, are you trying to are you trying to make me feel better at three and seven <laughs> right now after watching the Saints? I knew it was trouble, boys. First of all, good to be with you uh, here on the Winning Cures. Of course. Of uh, course. Show. Uh, I knew it was trouble when Atlanta roughed up the Saints and held them to nine points in the Superdome. It was not going to be good for the Buccaneers to be the team following that while they're angry, while they're extra focused for practice and ready to go. And New Orleans looked every bit the part of an NFC favorite. Like they may be the team that's going to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Remember they were the number one seed last year oh, yeah. and the Rams upset them with all the controversy at the Superdome. I know they're a game behind the 49ers going into play right now, but they, they look to me at field level again, like the team to beat. They are a complete team. It is not just Drew Brees throwing it 50 times a game. Kamara's back healthy. He ran it well. Their defense is better than what most believe and understand that don't watch them. They're physical. Uh, they were playing the game even without their top DB, Marshawn Lattimore, and yet still locked down Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, the Bucks' top two receivers. I- I'm just I'm here to tell you there's still a long way to go in the regular season. you got to win your playoff games, but the Saints look like a team to beat. And now, now that I've said that, uh, can I please say something about the officiating here on the program? I'm talking about across the board, not this just is, in the Bucks hey, Saints game. This is this, your uh, time. I uh, want you to say whatever guys, you feel like. <laughs> guys, I'm, te- I'm telling you from the inside with an NFL team, watching this now uh, with credibility. I've watched this now for 15 years. This is as bad as I have seen it. And I know we've got a bunch of new referees over the last couple of years in charge of these crews. But I don't know whether these guys are gun-shy because of all the scrutiny from the command center in New York and, uh, and Al Riveron and his staff screaming at them about what to watch and what not to watch during the week. But, uh, I mean, time and again, it's not just pass interference. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the Saints had a critical fourth down play where they've got a player lined up in the neutral zone trying to cover Mike Evans, who's almost uh, – slow dancing with him like back in like back in high school <laughs> up close to him uh, in front of the line of scrimmage and they don't throw the flag and and you see errors uh, with the clock and, and you see uh, you know holding calls missed and it's uh, you know it, it's as bad as it has ever been I mean across the board when you get a chance to watch some of these games uh, the the level of officiating is not anywhere close to the level of play. And I don't know that the answer is full-time officials. I don't know that the answer is younger guys. Uh, Chris, jump in here on this. I, I don't know what the answer is, but it has got to be better than what we're seeing right now across the board. Yeah, I mean, it's been bad for a while, and it's progressively getting worse. It's strange that it's getting that bad. Um, I, I listen to Mike Lombardi talk all the time on his podcast, and uh, a couple of weeks ago after just a really – rough week for the NFL officials. Uh, he made the suggestion to Goodell and them that they should offer Bill Belichick any amount of money that they can offer him <laughs> to retire as a coach and take over running the officials. He said, I guarantee you it, he, he'll, he'll, he will whip them into shape and he will have them making almost no mistakes. He knows the rule book better than anybody else. And he right. understands how it should be called and how it shouldn't be called. Um, and, and that's why people think the Patriots get away with so many things it, when really it's just they have a head coach that knows it better than the people out there calling it. Um, well, and, and maybe, you know, part of it is uh, younger. Again, it's like an age discriminatory thing here, but it's younger, more athletic, can keep up better, can focus better for longer. I mean, now you're at the point where these guys have been working eight straight weeks, ten straight weeks, that kind of thing with all the travel. They're not going to be as sharp. Or they're, or they're not going to be as good. I say this all the time with the college basketball officiating. By the time you get 
to late February and March. They've worked so many games during so many weeks. Uh, on and on, the same thing with the Major League Baseball umpires. It's human nature that you get fatigued after a while. But in, in any event, it, it's not the only thing. It's not the biggest concern. I, I'm just pointing out that the, the, the bad calls seem to be coming in greater numbers and in key situations and things being missed. And, the, and, I'll, and I'll point something else out to uh, the fans here on the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Just watching the NFL this week, any game, pick game, pick a game, pick a couple of games. Watch the repeated conferences by the referees where they are standing around for five seconds, eight seconds, like nobody knows what are we supposed to call here. What did you see? No, I didn't see that. Yes, you did. Okay, let's pick. No, I didn't. Let's pick the flag up. You'll see that over and over, the indecisiveness, guys, over and over again, and it's driving everybody crazy uh, in part with the, with the officiating. Now, it, let me ask you a, a question. As far as the, the pass interference reviews, has there been a <laughs> – because that, there was another egregious one where – and I don't – do you remember which team? It was in the Houston game. It was in the Houston, Houston, Houston game with DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins. It was, it was yes. bad in that game. The Bucks, the Bucks had a bad one with Mike Evans on a fourth down in the fourth quarter trying to get back in the game. It was an awful call on the field. Bruce Arians challenged it. They didn't reverse it. On Hopkins' play, I can't say for sure. You may know this, whether they challenged it. I think they they did. did. I think O'Brien did, and they didn't overturn that one either. And and at this point – But they did overturn one in the 49ers game. So it's not like they're just making a blanket rule that we're just not going to overturn these. And the 49ers one didn't look nearly as bad as those two. And Al Riveron is the one who makes these decisions. What the hell is he looking at? Uh, that's what everybody wants to know. And and obviously on Sunday afternoon, now we need to uh, peek behind the curtain just a little bit here, and then we'll move on to the underdogs. Uh, keep in mind, if there's seven or eight games rolling on the early slate, as there is, it's not just Al River on alone. There's two or three others in there with him that are reviewing these because he can't watch every play of every game simultaneously for eight games and keep track of all of that. Yeah, but it's easier – it's easier when there's only three games on the late slate or there's only one Sunday night game to keep up with it. Now, uh, but, it, was, it but, so I'm not making excuses, but, yeah. but still, th- th- that's a factor in this. But there's, there's so many egregious examples right now. I agree with your sentiment. What are they watching? What do you have to have to overturn some of these when you're not calling it? I would what, agree. It, what is, it was the late game that he did overturn it in. But my issue is, is when the challenge flag is being thrown, I think Al does watch all of those because I don't think we've ever had a scenario where two challenge flags were thrown within the same 20 minutes of one another. So it's not like he can't make the call on that. Um, and, well, but and, remember, remember, they've got the ability inside of two minutes of each half to overrule as well on their own. And they've got to be watching that and monitoring that in every game. So that's part of the mechanics of what's that's happening. That's almost and, impossible in the early games, yeah, because oh, – they all sure. run in the same two minutes at the exact same time. Um, here's one thing that I would actually like to, I guess, find some statistical information on. Are the calls he's overturning against the same crews and the calls he's refusing to overturn <laughs> them be, in? Or, that'd be a great question. Like, like, are there crews that he either trusts and they're veteran crews and he's not overturning anything? That's a great them? point. And that's a great point. And there are fewer veteran crews – uh, especially with the referees, because again, I believe there are eight uh, referees that are either in their first or second year out of like the 14 crews. I think they use yeah. about 14 crews on a given week right now. Um, yeah, it, it may, may, may be more than that. I think, you know, you have 16 games in weeks that you don't have by, so you'd have to have 16 crews in that case because a crew does not work twice in the same weekend. But there, there's something like eight new referees from last year and, and rookie referees this year combined. And you can clearly see in their games there's a lot of indecisiveness. Um, and, and so that's got to improve. Uh, these, guys, these guys are maybe a little gun-shy because they're being overruled by New York on, on simple calls as well and picking up flags. So, again, we spent a ton of time on the officiating, and I know the fans want to get to the games itself. The only point that I'm making is I have done this for 15 years for an NFL broadcast on the sideline. I'm telling you, I'm testifying, it's as bad as it's ever been on the, on the calls, game in and game out, just across the board in the NFL. There you go. We're done. We're off the soapbox. Let's get to some doggies. <laughs> 
Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, the biggest game of the weekend, the Packers at the 49ers. The Packers are a three point underdog on the road. Now, wait a minute. You think that one is that one the biggest game, or is the Cowboys at the Patriots the biggest game? But wait a minute. What about the Ravens against the Rams on Monday Night Football? We've got like four candidates for the biggest game. Well, I think this this is a great weekend. Here's my reasoning for this. I think that this has to do with who could end up with the number one seed in the NFC. I don't know that the other ones make that. that distinction. Well, all right. We were talking about that with the Saints, and if you're if you're the 49ers, you got beat at home by the Seahawks. You escaped last week against the Cardinals, who were winning that game for a lot of the game, and now you get a third home game in a row with Green Bay coming in, uh, and the Packers here with Aaron Rodgers very much in the North race in the division. And you're right, uh, battling here. This uh, this would be a head-to-head situation for tiebreaker for home field advantage, et cetera. And the Packers are an underdog. I'm getting some points with Aaron Rodgers in this game. I'm going to take a strong look at that one on Three Dog Thursday there against San Francisco. That uh, the 49ers have not been nine and one since they won the Super Bowl in the 1980s. How about that with Joe Montana? So now we're going back a ways. For the last time, San Francisco was nine and one. Pretty incredible for them. Damn. I did, yeah. <laughs> I did not realize that. I mean, it makes sense because after. Uh, after Montana left, after Steve Young left, right, dark days, right. dark days, dark days. Well, and, and even when they won the Super Bowl in '94 with Steve Young, his championship year, they were not nine and one that year. No, the the last two times they had gotten to eight and one um, was the '90 season when they did not win it, and then they also, I believe, in either '88 or '89, were also nine and one. And so that that tells you it's been a while since they've been this good in San Francisco. Can it continue against Green Bay? We'll find out. The let's talk about uh, an East Coast game. The Eagles got beat last week by the Patriots, and correct. And of course, to uh, to finish that up, to to bring on somebody else, maybe to to wipe that bad taste out of their mouth, they get hustling, bustling Russell, and the <laughs> Seattle Seahawks coming in. Uh, any yeah. chance that uh, that you might look at the uh, the Seahawks as yes. an East Coast underdog? There's another great game for the weekend because the Seahawks have been so good. They beat Cleveland at Cleveland earlier this year, and I, I believe I saw the stat earlier this season. They, they've won something like 10 of the last 12 times they've been in the Eastern time zone. Uh, they come all the way east, and it does not affect them. And uh, Philadelphia had all kinds of trouble scoring in that game uh, last week. Uh, against the, the, the Belichick defense. You were making reference to, to Belichick earlier in our conversation here. That's another great game for this weekend with Seattle off the two dramatic wins in overtime, back-to-back over my Bucks, and then over the 49ers who we were just talking about, then they had the bye week. And so now the Seahawks come off the bye week, come east. We'll, took a, we'll take a look at that one as well for Three Dog Thursday. What a great weekend of NFL games. I think, I think everybody's going to be glued to Cowboys-Patriots but do not sleep on Ravens Rams uh, for that game. Lamar Jackson just phenomenal, and there are numerous teams right now that are saying, "What were we thinking? Not drafting this guy?" And Baltimore looks genius for trading back into the first round a couple of years ago to get him. I, be- I believe the number that you're looking for is 31. I believe 31 teams right now are kicking themselves for not doing that. If I had to, <laughs> if I had to count, I would think that would be the number. It, yeah, there's there are a lot. Well, yeah, because the, pa- the he Packers. would still be sitting on the seat right now. He'd probably be playing. You think, you think the Chiefs? Yeah. Oh, think, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. For not drafting, man, they got Pat. But they didn't know they had Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes had only played Week Seventeen man. at that point in time. Look, right. I, I don't know that every NFL team out there would have been willing to rebuild their entire offense. They didn't around this guy. They didn't. They didn't. They built that entire offense, and then they added him to it. What do you mean they rebuilt it? Who would they add? What'd they change? But well, I, you know, I don't have a good answer. Hey, the only, wise, the, only the only thing I keep the only thing I keep coming <laughs> back to is this is another classic example of why we don't get into the group think in the off season and the combine and all the stuff about him. He should he should go try to play wide receiver at the combine and catch passes at his pro day and that kind of stuff. 
Look at his tape at Louisville, and you Thank saw you. exactly. I know it's the ACC, and I know there were questions about competition or whatever, but you saw the makings of what you're seeing now at Louisville. You saw him be able to make the laser throw. You saw him when he gets out of the pocket, Lamar Jackson we're talking about, that he, that he is Michael Vick 2.0 on trying to catch him and stop him. So maybe maybe that's another great lesson that we learn, and a lot of teams right now are having to reevaluate that maybe we should pay more attention to what a guy looks like in his games on his college tape. Can't win a Heisman Trophy without being able to throw as a quarterback. Not possible. And then the other thing is he had an absolute duel, duel with um, Deshaun Watson, and if he had a receiver that had any heart and guts to him whatsoever, he beats Deshaun Watson in that Clemson team. At Clemson in that At game. Clemson. That's right. And I think they just had a rematch, and how did that go for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens? I think it went pretty well. <laughs> I, I believe week, Lamar so. brought some stank from, from that game to it. There's no doubt that he remembered losing that game. Yeah, I agree. And by, and by the way, and I know you got to go, uh, they've already beaten the Patriots. And, yes. and now they've beaten the Texans, and they beat Seattle at Seattle, and now they're playing the Rams in L.A. Uh, at what point do we start talking about the Ravens as the team to beat? If they win this game Monday night, are they not the team to beat? Forget about the records. Well, I think are they, they not are. the team to beat? I think we are talking about that. I think they've earned that now already. I don't know that beating the Rams do anything for that because the Rams are missing the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, the Rams are 6-4 and four right now. If they, uh, if they lose on Monday night, they will be 6-5. and five. Uh, I don't know that they get back into the playoff. Right? I don't think this game sets them up for that. Uh, but, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they are, uh, to me, they are the team to beat. He's taken down the two people that I thought he was in contention with for the uh, for the MVP in Deshaun and Russell. Now, Russell has played extremely well, even though he lost head-to-head to, to, to Lamar. Uh, this is going to be a fun race going down to the end for the MVP. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be a lot of fun this weekend with these different games and some very juicy underdogs that we'll be talking about on Three Dog Thursday, boys. Hey, before uh, before I let you go, really quick, interesting stat for you. Your boy Jameis has 18 interceptions. Mm. That yes, is, he does. That is the most by a quarterback through 10 games in the NFL in the last decade. The last person to do that was Jay Cutler. Is there any chance that they keep Jameis around, or is this it? Well, I mean, at the rate that it's going, he's making the decision easier. Now, here's the good news. He's got an opportunity here this week with Atlanta and over the course of the next couple of weeks to turn the narrative around. The The big key for Jameis Winston right now is you've got to see him be able to respond to all the negativity, to all the talk about the interceptions. And if he does not, that may make the decision right there. Over the course of the next six weeks, uh, it may very well make the decision, let's say, over the next two or three games. How does he respond? Because it's way too many interceptions. There's so much conversation right now in the Tampa Bay market about who's responsible. Is it the line? Is it the receivers some of the time? The bottom line is you can combine, I saw this stat, you can combine Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, and I think it's one other quarter, maybe Lamar Jackson. They combined don't have 18 interceptions. So it can be done at a high level without throwing the ball to the other team. Yes, it can. All right, he is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He's also the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. Make sure you go subscribe to the podcast. Leave him a nice review. Tell him the guys from Winning Cures Everything sent you. I'm sure he will appreciate it. TJ, thank you, as always, for coming in and hopping in with us every single week. Boys, always good to be with you, Gary. I look forward to having you on Three Dog Thursday picking some underdogs. Oh, I'm bringing fire this week, buddy. I hope you're ready. All right, boys. All right, we appreciate TJ for hopping in here with us. Always a good time. He hops in every single week. Of course, go enter the football picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure that you check out all of our other stuff there as well. Videos, pre- uh, previews, podcasts. Uh, picks, etc. I can't even talk tonight. It's all right. I, I can't get my words right. But either way, I will get them right over there. Picks, podcasts, previews, videos, social media platforms. Go check it out. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We do appreciate that. Hit the like button. Leave us some comments. Tell us what your picks are for the week. We, uh, we like to hear what you guys are thinking as well. And 
go to tunicatravel.com. Figure out what Tunica, Mississippi has got going on. It's always a good time down there. We highly recommend it. We will see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.